Hello guys and welcome to the Upper Room. My name is Pascal and of course welcome to this particular episode. Now this one is a fantastic one that you really want to see because of course here we interview most of your amazing celebrities that you want to listen to and thought leaders, people that will talk about how grace has worked for them and the likes of you as a kingdom child or if you're aspiring to be, this is what you need. We're going to short break right now. When we return, the show continues. Now, welcome back. It's still the opera. My name is Pascal, and the person we're about to bring to your screen is a mother, all right? a special need advocate, um, a teacher, a pastor, a reverend, and she's been to different countries in Africa, spreading the good news, liberating people from the shackles of failed marriages, all right, especially domestic violence as well, or such like that. Stick around. That we're talking about the person of Reverend Victoria. Lawrence, thank you so very much for coming through on the show. Man. Thank you, we appreciate it. Now, let's start from here. How has the year been for you? 2023. It's gone so fast. It's gone so fast. <laughs> last, the final very, quarter already. Yeah, it's been very mm. busy. Very productive, very fruitful. Um, yeah, I can't believe it's October already. Absolutely. You believe that the year is really running so fast. It's really running so fast, yeah. Mm. yeah. You've done so much for women, generally. Especially everybody, you've done so much for everybody, everybody. but majorly focused yeah, on women yeah, who, of right. course, maybe the art of marriages yeah. and single mothers, yeah. people that are really struggling. Yeah. Um, let's start from one of the reasons why you decided to take on this amazing challenge because I really like it's a challenge yeah. for you. Yeah. Why did you start? Why did I start? That's a good question. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I started when well, I would like to start by saying I was inspired by the Holy Spirit to do it. But also, it was also a personal experience where I had gone through uh -huh. some challenges in my marriage as well. Um, I went through, I went into my marriage expecting it to last forever um, because my parents are still married. They've been married for over 55 years. Oh my God. Um, obviously, things didn't work out the way I, I expected in my marriage. Um, and because of that, it really kind of uh, made me to realize I'm a very confident person. I came out from a very um, happy and loving home, Copy that. Christian homes. Mm -hmm. Um, so I didn't expect to have any problem in marriage. I was not prepared for it. Mm -hmm. So when I started having my challenges, it was quite overwhelming. Um, and then that was when I was inspired to help other women out there who may have to raise children on their own, mm -hmm. or maybe they've gone through domestic abuse, or they just married and unhappy for whatever reason. And that was why. So it's personal challenge yeah. as well as goal given vision. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now, of course, you must have actually encountered a lot of challenges mm -hmm. because, of course, there's no brighter future without a particular challenge yeah. Yeah. with it. Yeah. So um, you want to tell us one of those challenges that made you realize? Because, of course, at some point in your journey, you have realized mm -hmm. that you were about falling, but mm -hmm. something held you back based on your belief and what you have behind you. Mm -hmm. All right, and this was the thing that first started your movement. Mm -hmm. Now, what was that particular challenge that you realized that, man, I'm almost falling, but I have to keep going? Yeah. I think for me, it was when my husband moved out of the house and moved back to Nigeria from the United Kingdom. Oh. So it was a big challenge for me because it was the first time I experienced living alone and being having to raise three children by myself and at that point when you're a christian and also a, a christian leader it's almost a taboo to be a christian and not have a husband next to you how do you want to talk you, to people yeah so, you're isolated people look down on you if you don't have a husband next to you so i went through a, a little bit of that indirectly and also directly and i think it was that time that i began to think about life differently Mm. Um, because prior to that, I always felt that if you're married and you have a problem, you're married, maybe you're not a good woman. Mm. Maybe you've done something wrong. Uh, maybe you're not doing this right. But I, I realized in my marriage, even though I wasn't perfect, uh, but I realized that anybody, it takes grace to make a marriage work. And that is only by the grace of God that people stay married for a long time. Because you can do everything you know to do 
and your marriage may still fail. Mm. And that was where I found myself. And uh, it was almost like a dead end. I didn't know how to forge ahead in life. But the Lord spoke to me during that time. And um, he, gave me, he said, gave me Jeremiah 29, 11, that even in the midst of this problem, I have a good plan for you. A plan that is good to prosper you and not to harm you. And I held on to that word and I continued to to um yeah to do what i do Leave. absolutely yeah. fantastic let's talk about your ministry right now yeah. and you made you've done so much in this ministry the father's joy yeah. ministry yeah. what's what's your inspiration behind setting up this ministry yeah, yeah it was actually originally we're called abigail outreach ministry and we changed our name about three years ago oh. when we turned 10 about 15 years ago uh -huh. and because the lord said i'll give you a new name and the reason for that is mainly because when we started it was mainly for women only mm. and particularly women who were going through divorce were separated or were experiencing any kind of domestic abuse in their lives uh, but over the years um the, the vision has evolved and so the meaning of abigail is father's joy so what we are now we're now the father's joy because our ministry now speaks to everybody both male and female particularly the special need aspect of the ministry Copy is that. for family mm -hmm. amazing so let's talk about how um the ministry has helped women in different uh ways across the world mm -hmm. this particular father's joy mm -hmm. ministry or Abig formerly known as abigail's Abig ministry yeah. how has he helped a lot of women well um, yeah one of our we, we believe in empowering women because um a woman is a powerful piece in the house. Absolutely. Without a woman, a nation suffer. Uh, we are the we carry power, and I always say to people, when you look after your woman, when when God says, husband, love your wife, it, that's all. That's all you have to do. Just love your wife, and it's a woman submit your husband. So because women don't have, you don't need to tell a woman to submit when you love them. If you love them, you get everything you want. So give a woman one pound, it will turn into one thing. It's because we have the power to multiply. That is our, you know, that is who we are. We are helper by design, helper by nature, and helper by DNA. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So when a woman is down, then they can't help. They can't fulfill the primary role to be a helper to somebody. Not just a husband, friend. So a woman is always there to help. When a woman is down, the family is down, the children are down. So I'm very passionate about supporting women because society have managed marginalized women all over the world women are made to feel the second class citizen in most parts of the world in some places women are told to keep quiet even in the bible some people still don't believe that some women that women should be a minister or should preach and that is what some denominations still practice right. till tomorrow um so because of that uh, we've supported women in different parts of Africa. We started in UK. Uh, we started by, first of all, by raising awareness of domestic abuse, mm -hmm. which was very prevalent at the time. So when you're going to domestic abuse in the church, you're supposed to keep quiet and pray. You're supposed to, when you tell your pastor, your pastor, what have you done? You know, as a woman, it must be you that is provoking him. Every finger points back to the woman. So we have a, a, a community of women in church who are suffering in silence, who have been seriously abused emotionally, psychologically, financially, in every way. But they come to church, they smile, they still give their offering, they still pretend that everything is okay, but yet they're dying. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, in Nigeria, in last year, um, Oshinashi, that was a big one that everybody yeah, was talking, talking yeah. about. So we started by raising awareness, mm -hmm. telling women you have a voice, telling them you don't have to die in your marriage. If you're going through any kind of domestic abuse, Let's know. help is available for you. So mm -hmm. we started helping women who were experiencing domestic abuse, helping them into counseling, providing practical help like food. You know, some of them, when they move out of that abusive situation, they have nothing because they've lived in this marriage where the man is told them, I'm the husband, I will give you, you know, food, I will give you money. If they don't, if they don't want the woman to do whatever they're asking the woman not to do, you don't get the money, you don't get, you don't get to do your hair or anything like that. So we support women, practical help. So whatever that is, maybe it's housing, maybe that is helping them to rent a place, whatever this is, we provide practical support. And then from there, we move to different parts of Africa, recognizing that women in Africa is all about poverty most of the time. So we do empowerment program in Africa, yeah. uh, whereby we equip women to be able to be responsible to look after their children. Majority of them, maybe they're widows, or maybe they're living alone, the husband, 
you know, has many wives and they're just there having to fend for their children by themselves. So we cater for those categories of women mm -hmm. by empowering them through skills acquisition, giving them money to start up businesses and providing food provision for them. Some of them, so we bought different things, you know, I can't even begin to kind of sew in machines. Uh, we supported disabled women in Malawi. So different things, depending on where, what we find when we go there or the church that we're partnering with in that part of the world, whatever need they've established, then whatever we can do, we do it to support them. Absolutely. But mainly we start with women. Copy that, yeah. mm. copy that. Yeah. It's still uh, the Opera Room here, one of your favorite amazing shows here, talking about the, the way God has actually helped us and talking to some of your facilitators that gives you exact thing that you want. I'm going to short break right now. When we return, the show continues. <music> Welcome back guys, it's still Opera Room, my name is Pascal and we still have with us Reverend Victoria Lawrence of the building. Mom, let's talk about disability right now. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the major things some strat of people in the world mm -hmm. go through mm -hmm. and we have little or even no people attending mm -hmm. to them. And I know that one of your goal in your the Father's mm -hmm. sure. Joy's ministry is to attend extensively mm -hmm. emphasis on that mm -hmm. to people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. you want to tell us about that? Yes. Um, we, one, of, one of our aim, main aim is to support families who are raising children with special needs. We call it Angel Special Program. Angel, uh, special. Angel special Program. That is one of the projects that we, we actually foster. And that particular project was actually birthed again from personal experience. I have a daughter who is 23 years old and she's living with autism. Mm -hmm. and, um, and she was uh, gave birth to her in, in UK. And I remember going through that painful journey of raising her some of the stigma that, that is attached to it. And also sometimes the ways you're treated or looked down upon within the church community when you have a child with, with disability. Mm. There's a lot of shame attached to it as well, that you almost feel guilty for giving birth to a child with disability, like it's your fault. Uh, many people actually do blame people that have got children with disability. Or exactly. well, maybe it's something you ate, or maybe it's in your family. I've seen many husbands leave their wives, or why? because they think oh, it's the bloodline of the woman that is that has brought them um, a child with disability so for me i'm going through that pain again and not having help i didn't know anybody when my daughter was young when i was going through my diagnosis process to really find somebody to talk to to ask for advice what do i do what you know what's going on i had no idea um so the journey was painful and full of tears and pain um, she was not potty trained until very later in life. Um, she didn't speak. The doctor said she would never speak. She would never do this. She would never do that. So um, she had developmental delay, epilepsy, autism, ADHD, long diagnosis of things and nocturnal anorexis. Mm. So in having to carry this alone and not even having one person to talk to about it, even when you talk to people about it, it is trivialized because they don't understand the pain. So let's just pray. So during that journey, I decided I actually after going through the painful denial stage, because that's what most parents go through, you're in denial. No, my not me in Jesus' name. God is going to heal her. Or you just keep praying that you're going to wake up one day and this girl is going to be different. This boy is going to be different. But having gone through that denial and painful reality that this healing has not come the way that I want it. So what am I supposed to do with this child? Then I know I needed to access services, professionals who can help me so that I can help her. Mm -hmm. So I went to study about autism to learn how to support my child and other people. Mm -hmm. um, I began to seek professional help, having speech and language therapies to come home. Then the Holy Spirit led me to read this book in John about the boy that was born blind. You know, the disciple asks, is it the sin of the mother or the father that made this boy to be born blind? And Jesus said, no, it is neither the sin of the mother nor the father, but it's so that the glory of God may be revealed in this child. And that sets me free from the guilt that I've carried for a long time. That maybe it was something that I did during pregnancy mm -hmm. that made my child to come, to come out that way. And then I realized, okay, the glory of God will be revealed through my child. What does that look like? That means I should not hide her. So I started 
um, this ministry by showcasing my daughter. I post a lot about her on Facebook. I share our journey and our story. And in being vulnerable and doing that, people started contacting me and wanted to talk to me about their, their child. So now we have a WhatsApp group with over 300 people in that WhatsApp group that's got children with disability. And so we support them, we, we, we give them information. The greatest problem that any parent face when they have a child with disability is the problem of stigma, attitudinal problem, mm -hmm. which comes from the community, friends, family, church group, faith group, nasty people Copy sometimes that. you know so. <laughs> all right let, let's let's talk about one of the, i can talk for africa on I that know, topic. It's, it's, okay. it's okay but i'm really enjoying i'm enjoying it because one of the things that people fail to have is knowledge because it's fragmented yeah. you know, there's certain things you don't know but i've, I've been nailing all that i'm gonna say mm. um, but let's talk about one of the things you enjoyed most during charity mm. What's that one thing? What's that thing? Or what are those things okay. you enjoy the most during charity when you give people? Yeah, charity? I mean, what 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 I enjoy most is when you see somebody who didn't have nothing or was crying or in pieces when they come to you or mm -hmm. when they contact you, and then just by giving little. Sometimes it's not big things you're giving. Sometimes it's even nothing. Just hear, you know, listen here or direction, signposting, mm -hmm. and you meet this person the next time. Their life has changed completely already simply because of they received the right advice at the right time okay. that helped them That's so lovely. so seeing them you know transform you know into somebody different you know and and glowing or flourishing mm -hmm. that's i mean that's fulfilling for yeah. africa the way according according to africa you know yeah. sometimes um environment shapes the way people speak about something mm. speak up because of course they try to um, follow the customs and traditions mm. of the past, yeah. which sometimes looks like indoctrination. Yeah. Now let's talk about this. For likes of women who are currently going through um, domestic violence, mm. but of course have been silenced, maybe because of the cultural mm. um, attachment or affiliations. Mm. What is your advice to them? My advice is they need to understand that God loves you so much and his sending his only begotten son to save you. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge pride that has been placed on your life. That's why God sent Jesus. So you must know you are worthy, you're powerful, you are beautiful, mm -hmm. and you're so important is God's agenda that it would not permit a man to take your life or a woman, because some women kill their wife, their husband as well. So domestic abuse is both ways, you know, and all will not allow somebody to kill you just because you want to hold on to your marriage. So I want to tell that woman who is out there, who is going through domestic abuse and you're silent, you feel like if you leave that marriage, maybe you will not have anything. Trust me, there is hope for you. God loves you and he will make sure that the glory of the latter is bigger than the, than the former. He will take care of you. There are more people out there who are willing to support you, to help you out of that marriage, but you need to love yourself enough to come out and to speak up about it so you can get the right help there's so, help available absolutely so how has grace worked for you how has grace, grace, grace the grace, grace of god grace has worked for me in then every way yeah. he has brought me finance mm -hmm. he has given me an instruction sustain me grace has taught me to keep quiet and know when to speak and know when to speak grace has taught me to know when to go and know when to go and when to relax and do nothing grace is the is everything mm -hmm. and grace is jesus so, <laughs> so grace, grace, grace is Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Right, so, but what are you most mm. grateful for? I'm grateful for life. Christ. I'm grateful for being alive. Firstly, I'm grateful for the privilege to serve God, people. Yeah. Let's talk about two of your uh, favorite quotes, the ones that have been keeping you going, even when in your down times, but even those were what were keeping you going. Those were like your Adesara, uh, like this your Medi that used really? to keep you going back then and even now one of it it would have to be romans 8 18 okay. that the current um pressure the current situation or circumstances is nothing compared to the glory that is to be revealed mm. so that's that keeps me going because whatever i'm going through mm -hmm. you know i look at it off, this is nothing compared to what i'm going to receive of course of that because of the oh. joy that is ahead of me, I will endure whatever I'm going through. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this particular episode. My name is Pascal. And till we come your way next time, still the upper room, stick around, don't go nowhere.